keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack Cardiovascular Imaging. Hello, I'm William Zogby from the Methodist DeBakey Heart and Vascular Center. And with me today is Dr. Bill Little from Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We will be chatting about a study that uh, will be coming up in uh, the uh, Jack Imaging Journal about a new methodology to evaluate diastolic function. Tell us about that. Uh, the color M mode provides a spatial temporal map of the velocities along a scan line from the left atrium to the left ventricular apex. Um, you, looking at this in early diastole shows you how flow propagates into the left ventricle. The conventional way to analyze the color M mode is to use the aliasing boundary to map out a iso uh, velocity contour uh, and then to take the slope of this contour as it moves from the mitral annulus to the apex of the left ventricle provides a measure of the propagation velocity. Uh, normally, there's a rapid propagation velocity. Uh, in patients with diastolic dysfunction, the propagation velocity is reduced. There are some limitations to this method, however. Um, in looking at the velocities, frequently there is not a single propagation velocity. Uh, um, in fact, the, the velocity may uh, suddenly slow uh, as the, the blood enters the left ventricle. Um, furthermore, there's some variation and uh, potential uh, um, inter-observer variation in calculating the, iso, uh, uh, the propagation velocity. So we looked at this in a slightly different way. We used a, a quantitative algorithm to uh, reprocess the data. We looked for the iso, uh, uh, objectively established the iso uh, velocity contour. And what we found is that normal filling is characterized by a rapid initial velocity of propagation that extends about three centimeters into the left ventricle. And then it abruptly decelerates and the propagation velocity is much slower. Uh, the terminal propagation velocity is slower. What we found is that patients with progressively increasing levels of diastolic dysfunction, that the, not only is the initial propagation velocity reduced, but the distance in which it propagates into the ventricle is reduced. So the deceleration point occurs closer to here. the mitral valve. So we then uh, used a, calculated a new parameter, which is the product of the initial velocity and the distance that it travels to the deceleration point. And we term this the uh, uh, VS, which is really a measure of the strength of ventricular suction. And we found that this uh, new parameter uh, performed better than uh, the conventional propagation velocity in identifying patients with diastolic dysfunction. So basically, this new method quantitatively this time measures when does the inflection point start with this velocity coming in and gives us a new diastolic function parameter. Right. So it, Is it this going to be operationalized? Are we going to have a computer algorithm to do that? Yes. So the, the new parameter, instead of, it, it more accurately describes the, the process of the filling, instead of just as a single velocity, it's the initial velocity times how long that how long? is maintained. And in a normal, it's a higher velocity that's maintained longer, whereas you become abnormal, it's a lower velocity that is not maintained as long. Very now, good. Very good. Uh, I think that this is wonderful because it brings also, in addition to the physiology, some objectivity in the measure. So we hope to have this uh, actually in our ultrasound color Doppler uh, M-mode evaluation for diastolic function. I want to thank you very much for joining us today. Thank uh, you. We look forward to seeing it in print. Thank you very much.